On behalf of the PTA Council and the Plano ISD Key Communicators, I welcome you to the ISD School Board Candidate Forum. Before we begin the forum and introduce the candidates, we have a representative here on behalf of Collin College to share information on the upcoming bond election. I would like to welcome Judy Dropman to the podium. Thank you, Ruth, and thank you all for being here. One of the last times that I was in this room, I was sitting up here as a school board trustee. So for a lot of years, education has been my passion, and it's because it's the gift that keeps on giving. And that said, I want to talk to you just a moment about the bond issue that Collin College is issuing this year. You'll be voting on it May 6th or before. And it is to address the needs which I find astounding. Number one, that Collin County will triple in size in 20 years with uh, an expected growth population of 2.4 million people throughout the county. The campus here, Spring Creek campus, is 30 years old. It needs a little bit of renovation. But more importantly, what they're doing is taking the school through this bond issue to various different communities, Salina, Wiley, Farmersville, and all of those campuses will be um, given the opportunity to grow with special programs. There's a fire and uh, emergency services center. There's one that will, will uh, talk about distribution and logistics in the 21st century, all kinds of fiber optics, different things in different areas. There are 53,000 students now. Collin College has the lowest community college tuition in Texas. It's the second lowest tax rate. And through this bond, where there's no expectation that there will be an additional tax increase. So I hope that this gives you some information, gives you some insight into the reasons for the college to respect the fact that their strategic plan is giving us the opportunity to begin those plans and, and spend some money in the most important way we can do for 21st century workforce. Thanks. Thanks to all of you. Thank you, Judy. And thank you again to our audience for joining us here this evening. This forum provides an opportunity to learn more about the views and platforms of individuals who are seeking places on the Plano ISD Board of Trustees. We are taping the forum to allow more citizens to view it. It will be posted on the Key Communicator webpage and the PTA Council website. I'm pleased to introduce the candidates to you now. Uh, candidates, please wave when I say your name. Place one candidates are Tammy Richards and Carissa Picard. Place two candidates are Jack Liu, Angela Powell, Sridhar Yadavali, and Amanda Jackson. Place three candidates are Nancy Humphrey, uh, Yvette Jackson's not here this evening, Nathan Rylander. Place six candidates are Marilyn Hinton, Greg Meyer, and Trish Patterson. Thank you candidates for joining us here this evening. Let me now explain the forum guidelines. Each candidate will present a one minute opening statement and one minute responses to each question. Different questions will be given to each place. I'll be serving as the timekeeper in the front. Candidates are asked to remain seated and to speak into the microphones. We ask that all candidates refrain from using cell phones or texting or, using, or making phone calls. Candidates are asked not to use visual aids. Each candidate has a table in the foyer for their campaign materials. Key communicators and the Council of PTA members submitted written questions in advance to Mrs. Goldblatt and myself. Each place will receive three randomly drawn questions to answer. The forum will end at 8 o'clock. After the forum, the candidates who would like to continue visiting with guests 
will need to move outside the building as it will close at 8.30. I now invite to the podium Sharon Goldblatt, Chairman of the Key Communicators Committee who will serve as our moderator. Thank you, Ruth, and thank you, everyone, for coming. I'd like to thank our candidates for participating in this meeting and for sharing your views and important issues on the topics. And as we begin now, we will begin with the opening statements, and we'll begin with Ms. Richards. And uh, Ms. McGuffey, if you will just show them quickly your signs so that they'll see those. And she's readying her <laughs> time. You have 30 seconds, 30 seconds and a stop. So when you're ready, Ms. Richards. Thank you. I'm Tammy Richards and I've served as a Plano ISD trustee for seven years. I served for two years as board president. I've been a Plano resident for 29 years. I moved here on my first wedding anniversary and I've been a Plano ISD mom for 16 years. I'm a first generation college graduate. I have an MBA from Harvard University and an engineering degree from Texas A&M. I'm chief executive officer of a nonprofit in North Texas that helps 70,000 volunteers a year find a place to be of service. Prior to that, I was Associate Dean of SMU School of Engineering, helping college kids figure out what they wanted to do with their lives. In the first part of my career, I was a Vice President with Texas Instruments and their educational technology business, helping teachers in math and science instruct using technology. I have devoted hundreds of hours volunteering in this community. My first volunteer job was in 2002 on the Huffman Elementary SBIC. I volunteer at my church. I'm a band mom, a drill team mom, a lacrosse mom, and a member of many nonprofit boards. I'm passionate about PISD and helping children be all that they can be. Tammy Richards, place one. Thank you. Ms. Picard. Hello, I am Carissa Picard. I think there are two things that I would like you to know about me. First of all, I'm an attorney, and I think that my experience applying, interpreting and applying federal and state law to specific fact patterns, and my ability to negotiate, draft, and defend contracts will be an asset to the board and to the district. I'm also a parent to a PISD middle schooler. I am a single parent and a working parent, and I would like to be able to bring my insight as somebody who has struggled as a parent in this district to the board. I am running because I am passionate about protecting and promoting the individual dignity and the potential of every student in PISD. Thank you, Carissa Picard, place one. Thank you. Mr. Liu. My name is Jack Liu. I'm a software engineer. If a career can help uh, a future candidate help the PISD, I think my technology background can help the PISD share the information uh, with the uh, voters and parents and the students. And uh, I have been a uh, lot of uh, volunteer position. I, I was uh, my kids basketball coach for three years. I was a PISD science yard for two years and. Uh, actively involved into a PTA and uh, uh, most importantly I've been a Boy Scout leader for 13 years and uh, but this, you can all see all this in my flyer but what not showing there is uh, my wife, my, my kids, they all support me, they're all actively involved in, uh, in uh, uh, community service. My wife is, is more active involved in PTA than I did in the last 18 years in which my two kids grow up in PISD. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Powell. I'm Angela Powell. I'm running for place two. I'm very qualified for this responsibility. Coming from a poor large refugee family, it was a good quality public education that gave me the opportunity to achieve the success I have today. I am a byproduct of the American dream of a good public education. I have a son in PISD who went from pre-K uh, the pre-kindergarten uh, program through ninth grade, and I'm an active, I have been an active PTA mom member for over 10 years. My son has Asperger's, so I know the unique challenges that face those students who with special needs. I also have teaching experience. I've taught at community college and also at business school for several years. Uh, received my Bachelor of Science at Houston Baptist University and received my MBA with 3.8 GPA from the University of Dallas Graduate School of Management. I can relate to the needs of parents, students, administrators, and teachers. My focus would be on transparency, bond transparency also, and uh, financial accountability. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Yadavali. 
Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Sri Yedavali, and I'm running for place number two. Uh, I am a project manager with 15 years of experience in the construction industry, and I've built schools for a living, which means that I've also been uh, party to the public trust because most of the schools were paid by tax dollars. Uh, I am an advocate for collaborative learning and a STEAM-oriented uh, syllabus. Uh, I am a proud parent of two wonderful PISD students in, uh, in middle school. Uh, I am a product of public schools myself, including the IV program when I was a youngin. Uh, I am an advocate for 21st century economic growth and bringing our kids to, to be prepared for a 21st century economy. Uh, I have lots of things to say, but I can't say them now, but I wish you uh, to vote for me, place number two, Plano ISD on May the 6th. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Jackson. Hello, good evening. My name is Amanda Jackson, and I'm asking for your consideration for place two as well. There are three qualities that I would like you to know about me that differentiate me. First is I have seven years of experience in Texas public education specifically. That includes being a classroom teacher, a community college instructor, and a teaching assistant. I have exposure to a number of programs including ESL, GED, AVID, PALS, AP, as well as general ed. I also have formal education in the field. I've taken teacher certification courses. I've earned a Master of Education degree in counseling, so I'm familiar with a number of conditions including ADHD, intellectual disability, dyslexia. Um, I'm also working on a PhD in higher education, so I'm familiar with being college ready and uh, that helps me with a lot of uh, dual credit questions. Secondly, I'm highly committed to public education and PISD specifically. The absolute only reason we moved to Plano was for Plano ISD. It was the best system that could educate both of my children who are very diverse learners. And third, I'm familiar with PISD. I've served on SBIC, PTA board at Matthews and the grade level room rep. Thank you. Ms. Humphrey. Wow, one minute's hard. I'm Nancy Humphrey and I'm running for re-election in place three. I currently serve as the vice president of the school board and um, the previous three years I was the president and I've been vice president two other years. I have a master's degree in accounting. I've lived in Plano ISD for 24 years. I've been married to my husband for almost 26 years and both of our children graduated th through the system K through 12 here in Plano ISD. My service on the board has included work um, advocating for this community in Austin for property tax reform and relief. And my colleagues, uh, Missy Bender's here, uh, and I have developed a, um, a thing called tax parency, and we can talk about that. I'm a um, liaison to the city of Richardson, a liaison to the uh, Council of PTAs. I spent 16 years volunteering in the schools as a leadership role in PTA. I've um, seen, seen the district from a parent's perspective as well as a board member. PTA Life Member Award, Extended Service Award, Hendrick Scholarship Foundation Vice President, and I've got to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Rylander. So hard. Good evening, fellow key communicators. My name is Nathan Rylander. I am uh, I'm running for place three or playing OISD Board of Trustees, and I'm also here in another capacity as a key communicator for Brinker Elementary. Uh, I have served in a lot of different capacities. I've served our nation as a United States Marine, and I'm still in the Marine Corps Reserve. I'm, I'm a major in the artillery community of the United States Marine Corps Reserve. I, I've served our community as a watchdog at Brinker Elementary, as a youth soccer coach, as a deacon at Parkway Hills Baptist Church, and, uh, and, and with the Love Packs um, organization, nonprofit organization. My daughters are in second grade and fourth grade. They have a long way to go in Plano ISD, and the decisions that are made today are going to affect them for the rest of their time in, in Plano ISD. They're gonna affect my children, and they're gonna affect your children. They're gonna affect all 54,470 students in Burger Elementary, in, in Plano ISD. My name is Nathan Rylander. Thank you. Ms. Hinton. Hello, my name is Marilyn Hinton, and I have a master's degree in education and I am probably the only one up here who has actually been a teacher in the PISD system. I taught in the Head Start program. I was also youth director at a homeless shelter in Dallas and I also taught elementary education classes at Brookhaven College. I'm a member of the Parker Women's Club 
and the Plano Metro Rotary. I think that what's really important these days is we develop a program of character education for our children. Um, <coughs> we, we didn't need to do that, but I think that we do now. We have to um, provide a moral compass for our children in the future. I also am very serious about starting uh, more environmental classes in PISD as well. I mentored five students last year. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Meyer. Thank you. <clears throat> my name is Greg Meyer. I'm a candidate for Place 6. I want to thank you all for being here. Uh, my record of community service is extensive. I'm a former key communicator when my kids were at Sagling Elementary, so I definitely appreciate the service you are, are making to the community. Uh, I've also served on the a district's uh, career and technical education committee for five years um, and have done many, many other things. My, my candidacy is not about me. Sixteen years ago, my beautiful bride and I moved our students, moved our very young students to Plano for the high quality schools. Next year, they will graduate from Plano Senior. My candidacy is also not about my kids. My candidacy is about making Plano schools better for the next generation of students. How we're going to do that is by adding more programming for special needs students, more programming for students that will not go to college, and by making Plano ISD more transparent and responsive to, to parents. Again, my name is Greg Meyer. I ask for your vote in place six on May 6. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Patterson. Hi, I'm Trish Patterson, and I am running for Plano Independent School District, place six. Um, I am a longtime resident of Plano. I am a substitute teacher in the PISD school district as well as an adjunct professor uh, for Dallas County Community Colleges where I teach dual <coughs> college credit course to uh, high schoolers over in Dallas. Um, I am also very active in the community. I am president of a nonprofit called Plano Community Forum where we give scholarships to minority students in the city of Plano. I am also co-chair of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, weekend and I am a part of the uh, Junior League of Collin County. Uh, what I want to do is I want to make sure that every child has the opportunity to know that they have something special to give to their community. So that is why I'm running Trish Patterson Place 6. Thank you. Now we'll begin the question portion of the forum. I will be drawing <coughs> questions from the, the bowl here that were submitted by um, different people and I'll begin with Ms. Richards. How do you think the district could best engage with the community when it comes to in gaining public insight when making decisions? I think it's very important to know and listen to your community. That can take the form of email communication to trustees. That can take the form of meeting you for coffee at Corner Bakery, which I do a lot. It can take the form of reaching out to PTAs. I think it's critical that we understand what the community cares about. You can rule knowing the data, but you also have to know the hearts and the passions of the families. Also, PTAs are a wonderful conduit for that type of communication. So I think we can put in place both formal and informal methods to do that. We're revamping our website this year in Plano ISD, which I think that will be very important. We're using more social media. So I think we have a variety of both low-tech, high-touch tools, and high-tech tools that we can use to engage with our community. Thank you. Ms. Picard. Um, this is actually something that I have strong feelings about. Uh, as, as a parent in the district, I experienced difficulty in trying to understand what the board was doing and when it was doing and trying to locate the agenda, then understand the agenda. And I'm a licensed practicing attorney. And I found it to not be very user friendly. So it's, it's great to hear that they are going to revamp the website because I think it's necessary. But I really think that in order to get parents involved, you have to reach out to them and explain to them or give them a heads up of what's being considered in, in layman's terms and plain English and letting them know this is where you need to come if you want to share your thoughts. Also, I, I think we need to have a greater presence on, on social media. Thank you. Mr. Liu? Next question. Do you consider school board trustees as representatives of the community or school district and why? Uh, of course, community. And uh, we want to represent uh, uh, the voters, the constituents, to work with the uh, school um, to make better uh, school district. And uh, I think the school district is the property of each voter, of the resident of PSD and we all want to do a better job. 
uh, in reaching out, I think uh, I, I propose we use more technology. I think the kind of forum like this can be real time published not only to people sit here, but for people sit in their living room, in their kitchen. They should be able to listen as well. And they should be listened, if they're busy right now, they should be listened tomorrow, anytime when they have time. And they should be able to dig out the, the record and of the voting of the, 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 the document anytime from the internet. And from the personal point of view, as PISD Board of Trustees, we need to reach out to the student, to the parent, and to the, to the, to the citizens. Thank you. Ms. Powell. Okay. Our students are community students. So therefore, I do believe in school community collaboration. So school community collaboration recognizes the value of such community, local entities, such as the outside of the school, as their home. You know, we have to put their place of worship, the media, museums, libraries, community agencies, and businesses in the education of a community student. So I do believe that community is important. We've been asked if you speak more closely to the microphones, they have difficulty hearing in the back. Okay. All right. Did you want, need me to repeat the answer? <laughs> That'd be difficult. Let's move on with Mr. Yadavali. Uh, I, I don't agree with the question. I think it's both community and district. Uh, as a representative of PISD, we represent the district as a whole, as well as uh, an extension of the community. I think the, the prime mover of a trustee is to be an advocate for the student success. And uh, the student success actually helps the community. Lowers crime rates, lowers infrastructure costs. If you have a strong school district, all other services actually are more efficient. Uh, an advocate for teacher success. Again, I, don't, I, I think the argument uh, against teachers that's been floating around the media for the last 15 years is detrimental to the success of both the students and the teachers. We are an advocate for that. Finally, an advocate for parent communication, uh, going piggybacking on the last question, uh, perhaps ideas to help foster communication, like maybe having an ombudsman to help understand policy for the parents. Um, any number of ideas are there. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Jackson. Hi, I actually agree with Sri on this. Um, we are representatives both of the community and of the district. And being a mother of a child with special needs, I was thrown into the role of an advocate, but I also was an educator and I taught in the classroom. And anything that I learned in this role was that we have to work together as a team. Sitting on both sides of that table helps you to balance that perspective. And that's actually one of the reasons why I wanted to pursue this position here, because I knew I could be a good balance both between the district and the community. Thank you. Next question. Ms. Humphrey. If a voucher system is implemented by the state, how do you propose Plano ISD handle that situation and the effects it may have on the district? Okay. Um, well, I know, sitting as a board member, that our district opposes vouchers that's part of our legislative priority but if it were to pass in the house and senate um, i believe that we would want to keep our district as strong as it is i think you know right now i welcome the the competition if you will but what i would because we stand up to any competition very well but what i um, would want to make certain is that if vouchers are going to private schools or other um, schools that are receiving those funds that they be held to the same accountability standards that we are held to here in Plano and um, I, I think we just keep the district as strong as it always has been I think people move here for the district because of the quality education and the wonderful teachers that we have and I believe that vouchers really don't scare us in Plano but I think they they're a, a detriment to um, public education as a whole because they take money away to the, out of the system. Mr. Riley. So should, currently Senate Bill 3 has passed the Senate and is being kicked around the House, it, it hasn't passed yet, but should that be passed, how do we as Plano ISD handle that? I think there's a little bit of nervousness that that, that could draw funds away from Plano ISD and that some of those students might go to private schools, but 
we're one of the top ISDs in the state. Uh, I, I believe the opposite to be true, that we may lose a few to private schools, but I think we gain as many or more coming from other surrounding ISDs wanting to have their parents, wanting to bring their children to Plano ISD. Nobody is more interested in the success of a student than a parent, and I think that we would be the recipient of more students coming in from outside Plano ISD than having students leave Plano ISD. Next question, Ms. Hinton. What education-related legislation in the 85th session is most important to you and why? Well, again, I think I would go back and talk about the vouchers because the vouchers could be um, a very significant part of the entire state if that was to happen. And I'm concerned about um, some of the smaller school districts with the vouchers because they are not very strong and those vouchers could um, weaken an entire school district if it's too small and that's going to upset the entire cart of school um, school boards all across the all across the state so we have to be concerned about all of the students in the state and their relationship to the vouchers not just plain out mr Meyer. Uh, the, the, like the district, there are many bills that I'm watching. House Bill 21 is a great example. Uh, it, it directly addresses school finance, which is a huge challenge for us here at, P, at PISD. Next year, we are slated to send $102 million to Austin in recapture what is better known as Robin Hood. If that's not addressed, we're going to be crunched in between having to provide a strong quality education with fewer and fewer dollars. The other one that I've been watching a lot is House Bill 22 that came up from Representative Huberty in Houston, and it directly addresses uh, accountability of schools. It's a much improved uh, grading method for the schools that really, in my view, looks at the, the whole child and not just college readiness. I mean, how you, under the current system, how you address co uh, measure college readiness of an elementary school student is absolutely beyond me. I'm not an educator, but it makes no sense to me. So that bill is one that I'm watching and I'm strongly in favor of, and I hope that, that passes to bring common sense solutions to school accountability. Thank you. Ms. Patterson. Uh, for me, it would be the test parency. I think uh, as a district, we spend way too much uh, on the state test, and I just think it, it, it just needs to go away. I, the teachers are having to teach to the test, and those are things that we just really need to be aware of, and so I just think they, that needs to go away. Going back to place one, beginning with Ms. Picard. Do you think it's important for the district to provide career preparation options for students not bound for a four-year university? If so, what are some other programs you would like to see offered to these students? I am a little bit conflicted because on the one hand, I know that there are a lot of students who don't necessarily want to go to college. And I do know that there is a need for, uh, for individuals to go into professions that are, are more career related or more technical and not necessarily a college, you know, don't need a college degree. But they do still need some sort of technical certification and training. And so I'm of the position that I really think that what we need to do is every student needs to be prepared to go to college regardless of whether or not they plan to. And then we have resources such as programs within Cowling Community College that these students can go to while other students go to community, you know, go to four-year colleges if they want. Um, I'm, not, I don't, I'm not opposed to having students have an opportunity to engage and take classes at the community college in, you know, technical classes or, you know, the, these sort of, um, you know, HVAC or other types of classes. I, I think that we should communicate or collaborate with the, the college on that. Ms. Thank Richards. You. There was a very interesting <coughs> seminar at the National School Board Association meeting that I was able to attend last month that talked about the collaboration between a particular school district and their community colleges. They had students that were attending half day at the community colleges. They were doing virtual training for either the community college or their um, required courses within their high school. It was a wonderful partnership. And I think we need to continue to push with that with Collin College to continue to strengthen our partnership. 
I certainly am in favor of doing training in the skills trade, electricians, plumbers, and mechanics. I mean, those are things that kids need. And also, they're much more technical than people realize. And my father was an aircraft mechanic. He was studying physics in a hands-on way at the time I was studying in the theoretical way. And so we need to provide that basis for all children. I'd like to do more in advanced industries. We're actually looking to do an academy in that in Plano, very high-tech manufacturing and IT certifications. And I also want to work on programming that all kids can come out of Plano with at least 30 hours of dual credit. Right now, we do a good job in the English and government. We offer no math and science. I'd like every kid to graduate from Plano with 30 hours of college to help parents out. Beginning with, again, with place two and with Ms. Ms. Powell. What do you believe is the role of a trustee versus that of administrative staff? Okay, the role of trustees is actually to work in a team. So there are, you know, the trustees is a team. So as the role, you be a t is to become a team player. And, and, and to implement or to together be an informed team players to, to, um, to vote on policies that affects the, the good policies that would make our educational system for Plain ISD good. Mr. Gattavaldi. The role of a trustee is to be an advocate for the success of students. That's our first and foremost goal. How we do that is based on the issues at hand. Um, be an honest broker of the public trust and the public funds. The one part is to be an advocate for students. The other part is how do we finance that? And so being able to balance the books. Uh, the third thing is to be able to select the administrative staff, including the superintendent, to run the program. Our superintendent is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and I would not want to replace him for a New York Minute. Uh, However, it is the role of the trustee to be able to do that, or the trustee board. Uh, the fourth thing is to advocate for programs that would increase the success of the district, which might come from left field ideas, it might come from partnerships with business, partnerships with uh, the community college, partnerships with universities. To be able to be the ambassador for the district to make those relationships, also with Austin. Thank you. Ms. Jackson. A uh, trustee does a couple of different jobs. Sri mentioned one of them, uh, hiring, firing the superintendent, but we also assess the superintendent and his performance. Uh, we also provide governance, um, which is different than management. And we uh, set a lot of the policies. And one part that's really important with setting policy is there's really three goals of education, and almost every single policy is related to one of those goals. So when a policy comes down your table, you need to be able to evaluate it and see which of those goals that it is um, adhering to, and so we don't get too far over on one goal over another and get in this imbalance when it comes to policies. Um, and then also, good steward of the budget, as um, Sheree also said, but the other thing that trustees do that may not be on the books is that we do represent the district as we go out to Austin or even within our own community. Mr. Liu. I think the most important role for a PID Board of Trustee is to represent the constituent. And we talk about this, this, relation, this question is related to the question we asked before. Between as represent the community and the school, I think represent the community is more important for PID Board of Trustees. And more importantly, I think when making decisions, we're not only based on our own reasoning. We should respect the majority of the constituent. If you guys have different opinion with me, I should represent you. I should vote for you, not on what I think should be. If I think I should cast yes, and you say majority of you say no, I'll cast for no. I think that should be the most important role for PID Board of Trustees. Now, for place three, Mr. Rylander. What are your thoughts on the preliminary A to F rankings? What do you suggest the district does in response to this? So the preliminary A to F rankings that, that are being adopted now, I think are a little too simplistic in the sense that, that as Greg mentioned a few minutes ago, it's, it's difficult to assess college readiness of an elementary school. It, we need to take a step back and, and um, evaluate a better system. Uh, there have been proposals put forward to have a system where you're being evaluated on three criteria instead of five, 
and, and it just seems like a much more user-friendly system that is going to allow schools to be evaluated more appropriately. Ms. Humphrey. All right, um, in, la in the last biennium, the um, legislature brought forward the A through F accountability system, and that has preliminary, pre preliminarily been, um, we've started testing for that. I think right now House Bill 22 by Dan Huberty is a really good choice to provide a better measure of a school. It will measure beyond just attendance and star test, which is what they're doing for middle and um, elementary. And uh, it doesn't measure school progress, it doesn't measure the school climate, and so what this new bill presents is a better way it takes it down from five domains down to three that are the most important and it won't give a solid a or f it'll give a, a grade for each domain so that the users can discern discern that information and make their own determination for a campus putting a label on a campus is it can be detrimental it doesn't show the true performance now to play six mr meyer With the current emphasis on pre-K education, do you have any suggestions on the ways Plano ISD can better serve its pre-K age students? Yes, I, I think pre-K is a great way to close the achievement gap uh, that we have seen between um, you know, the different socioeconomic strata here that we have here within Plano. Um, another way that I think we can address that is by using the uh, Plano ISD curricula to partner with existing third-party uh, pre-K programs that are in Plano and using that that strong curricula to bolster their math their reading and their even foreign language um, so that when students arrive on our kindergarten doors uh, at the age of five they're ready to learn and ready to excel um, the reason I, I think foreign language is important is that you know students learn languages differently until the age of nine at the age of nine is the cutoff for when they learn languages as their native language. So if we can get more lang foreign language being taught in pre-K and elementary, I think that will help our students in the long run because businesses uh, that are hiring our students in the long run need multilingual students. So thank you. Ms. Patterson. Um, I agree with um, Greg. We do uh, the pre-K in PISD is actually excellent. And I like the idea that PISD is now going forth with uh, extending pre-K from half day to whole day um, for parents to be able to take advantage of that. So I, I think we need to continue on the path of doing that and, and extending it to the whole day uh, so that the parents can take advantage of it. Ms. Hinton. Well, pre-K in uh, Plano is getting ready to take some very major jumps and one of them is we're establishing a, uh, an academy at Huffman Elementary where the IB program as well as the Montessori program are both going to be incorporated into the pre-K program. And we think that that is going to be the significant jump that is needed to, uh, to start a major, major difference in our students that are at that age. And if it is successful, we, are, we have 15 schools that have pre-k programs in them now in elementary schools and then we will extend this um, IB program with Montessori to those schools as well back to place one Ms. Richards what should Plano ISD be doing to stay current with the other school districts specifically in regard to curriculum and technology Plano's always had a very strong curricular base, and I think we need to continue that investment. We certainly invest in our teachers to make sure that they're compensated, at least in the top quartile. They do a lot of our own curriculum development. I think we're very strong there. I do think we need to do more in technology. Um, it is, to me, concerning that we're not a one-to-one -one district. I just heard from friends in Richardson that they're going one-to-one, -one, so all children will have their own technology device. I think that's the push we need to look at very seriously. I know our Academy High School, they all have Chromebooks for all the students there. I think that's the direction we're going to have to move. We are moving to be more innovative in our other classrooms. Before, it was just the eight computers in the back of the room, and so now we've actually changed how we spend our technology dollars to give teachers and principals 
principals more flexibility. So if they want to do iPads in the classroom, they want to do handheld devices, they want to teach in a different way, we're now allowing them that flexibility, and I really support that. Ms. Picard. Well, Plano ISD is an incredible school district, and so I don't really look at it to compare with another school district. I just think about how can we improve or work, you know, improve what's already really wonderful, just make it a little bit better. I would like to see, as was mentioned by Greg, I would like to see foreign language being offered in the elementary school. I think that's really important. And I would also like to see a greater emphasis on updating the technology and pursuing the, the one-to-one -one that she's talking about. And finally, I'd like to see more magnet programs. It'll be nice to see how this plays out in Huffman, but I would like to see more, more creativity and innovation potentially starting in the elementary school level. Place two, Mr. Yedavali. Are there any funds in the district's budget that you would suggest be spent more effectively in other areas? If so, what changes would you suggest? Well, I've been trying to, I've been trying to wrap my head around the budget just to keep myself prepared. So I don't have a qu answer to question A. Uh, I am looking through it, and I could use Nancy and and other people's help to make sure I'm getting it right. But as to what to do with it, if we have funds that we can, we can distribute, uh, I advocate for putting as much back into the classroom as we can. If that means uh, increase in teachers' pay or, or teachers' benefits, if it means uh, investing back into uh, making the classroom more adaptable for the students, uh, anything we could do it's it sounds it's a big it's a big uh, it's a big baseball bat that I'm trying to swing here but on the bigger picture any funds that we can try and sequester to bring back to the classroom to make that experience between teacher and child as efficacious and as enriching as possible is key to what our mandate is being up here Ms. Jackson um, so far, Plano ISD does a great job of making sure majority of the dollars go into instruction. And that's one part that I want to make sure continues. Um, there is something that I, I would like to see or explore, and that is sometimes a community college system can vote to cover dual credit courses, the cost of those courses. And I think that we could try to collaborate and have shift some of those costs over to the community college uh, who also gets reimbursed um, through different avenues, and I won't go through all those now, um, so that that way that's one area that we can shift over. And if we shift that over, I would also like to see more funds put into shoring up our special education program that I think right now is underfunded. Mr. Liu. Well, one thing I can think of is the ESL program. I don't think it's necessary. I think if a kid were here in this country at five years old, by the time of he, turn, he or she turns into six, he can speak good English. I have a good example. I have a, a boy in my boy's school too. He came to the United States at fifth grade. He doesn't speak any English. His parents doesn't speak any, don't speak any English. And he goes to the troop, I have to translate for him. But one year later, he can get along. He, he doesn't need to spend a whole year studying the la language. He go along with academic with uh, his classmates very well, and right now he's the uh, SPL of the troop of with 140 kids, and he speaks very good English. Ms. Kao. Okay. Um, with with extra budgeting and or, or so forth. Um, well, I, first of the, first of all, I believe in um, transparency of our accounting. So, you know, I do believe that, like, for instance, the school bond should have been broken up into single line items. So the accountability of what we're spending is very important to me. And I believe that if we did have any extra funds, that we should more vigorously uh, partner with corporations, with local and state, uh, and have partnerships with these entities so that we can generate public involvement with our schools. And that would also help our, you know, our extra budgeting. Thank you. Thank you. Place three, Ms. Humphrey. With the current, excuse me, with the upcoming strategic plan revision, what are the current themes you feel still work and which ideas would you think might need to be revised? Well, I think that our 
um, statement of beliefs is very strong and we have revisited the portrait of the graduate and I believe that we modified that about four and a half years ago to make certain that we have children that are ready for global competition, not just graduating and working in Texas necessarily. We've got to serve the global community. I believe that another place that I would shore up a little bit more in our strategic plan is to go forward with more choices in our academies and we've begun that work. We had a subcommittee set up on our board K through eight and nine through 12. I actually was the chair of the subcommittee for the nine through 12 and we put together the guiding principles for the um, Advanced Industries Academy that is hopefully going forward. And um, Ms. Drotman talked about the Collin College bond and there may be some help there with the Advanced Industries Academy that we can partner with Collin. Mr. Rylander. So two, two critical things I think on the, uh, on the strategic plan and, and really even taking a step back the first thing we do is revamp the mission statement. Uh, the mission statement for Plano ISD is, is fairly anemic. I think we can get a whole lot more granular and more specific with that. Uh, as a Marine Corps officer, I've read thousands of, of mission statements and written hundreds, and, um, and you've got to have a task and a purpose, uh, and, and we don't really have that in that mission statement. The other thing, I, I agree with Nancy about the uh, about the secondary academy. I was actually on the committee for the secondary academy and I see a tremendous opportunity to provide some of those things to, to students who, would, who are interested in taking them and pursuing those avenues uh, and not, as long as we can do it cost effectively and I think probably the most cost effective way is to partner with Collin County Community College through that. But that, that's a critical opportunity that we have. Place six. Beginning with you, Ms. Patterson. What should your school district do better to prepare students as citizens? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, one of the things that I, I think uh, what I've learned being a substitute teacher and a long-term sub at the alternative school, I've learned that the students that are there most of the time are students who were transplanted or, or placed here for whatever reason. And I just wish we as a district could figure out a way that we could help those students get indoctrinated to the Plano way. Uh, Plano has a very rigorous curriculum and it should so that our students are prepared. But students who are placed here or were transplanted here are not real comfortable or are not real sure what that way is and they act out and they the, it, and it's just a pattern that keeps going on and on so if we could figure out a way to get students and parents indoctrinated into the PISD way I think it would it would be excellent for the district. Ms. Hinton. Well uh, character education has always been a very big part of what I thought PISD should be doing and I was on the national Committee for Character Education in Washington, D.C., and I was able to bring back some ideas for PISD. One of the things um, that we talked about a lot was teachable moments in the classroom where teachers can point out when a student is really doing something um, that is worthy of attention in terms of character. Uh, there are lots of other little programs that teachers can do that don't cost any money, and we established a um, a grid for all of the schools in Plano and all of the uh, grade levels and we and we made sure that in every class all across the entire district there was some character education going on in the class at some point and we were able to do that for several years and then that committee kind of dissolved so I think we need to bring back more accountability to character education. Mr. Meyer. Thank you. I think it's very important for Plano ISD to produce graduates who are patriotic and proud Americans. I think we need to teach American exceptionalism, that capitalism is the absolute best system ever invented on this planet, and that we should not apologize for being capitalists. So I think we should have more training and more classroom instruction on American exceptionalism in Plano ISD. Thank you. That concludes the question portion of the forum.
Now we'll begin with the closing statements, beginning with Ms. Patterson. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, um, with all the leadership roles that I hold in the community, one thing that I've learned is I have learned how to create and impact positive change. And lastly, uh, I just want to say I'm also a Plano mom. I have a child who has gone through the athletic program, I have a child who's gone through special education and will graduate this year, been in special education since the first grade. And I have a student who's in the advanced placement program. So being an involved mom, I see the wonderful programs that PISD has to offer, but at the same time, I also see what we can do to make those programs even better. So be proud, be strong, be Plano. Vote Trish Patterson for place six. Mr. Mark. Well, I'm not a Plano mom. <laughs> <laughs> Very proud to be a Plano dad. Uh, again, uh, there's a, my, my whole mission in this candidacy in running for the board is to make Plano schools better. Uh, there's a lot of ways we, I think we can do that. Increasing programming for students with special needs, increasing the focus on students who are not going to go to college and providing more options for them so that they can graduate on Saturday and go to work on Monday. Um, I think an increased partnership with Collin College is a great way to accomplish that. Um, I think increased transparency and responsiveness is, a, is another way we can accomplish that. Um, those of you that were involved in the instructional calendar discussion that occurred in February, thankfully we had a couple of board members stand up for parents because the administration was pushing for a second week in August start date. It's very clear that that's what they wanted. So I think we need to have greater transparency, greater involvement of parents, and a board that will push the administration to make Plano schools better. Uh, my name is Greg Meyer. I ask for your vote in place six. Thank you. Ms. Hinton. I have been on the Plano School Board for eight years now, and I have really enjoyed being there because uh, our board is one that has been very proactive in, in reaching the community and going out and talking to it. We try to be very accessible to every single parent, every student, and um, every senior in the community. And so I think that one of the things that we have not looked at in Plano are some of the students that are very, very high achieving are not getting into some of the top universities. And that's because we have um, limited access to how those students should go about getting there. And right now we only allow every student, every senior in Plano, 20 minutes for counseling, for going to um, their educational uh, pursuit after, after uh, high school. And I think we've got to take much more of a greater stand on preparing our children more individually for going to college. Mr. Rylander. So with two girls in elementary school, I've got a lot of skin in the game. And there's nothing like skin in the game to keep you engaged, to keep you active, keep you paying attention, and, and keep you engaged with other parents. I think it's in, imperative that no matter what the school board chooses to do, that when presented with different situations, that they present to the community the same evidence that they're receiving and they put that evidence in front of all the stakeholders and the stakeholders have a voice, have an opportunity to provide input in those decisions prior to the decisions being made. I think a lot of folks feel like decisions are made regardless of the input they give and that's not right. I stand for representative government. I've got skin in the game and we're not going anywhere. We've been here for 10 years, we'll be here for 30 more. My name's Nathan Rylander. Ms. Humphrey. Um, I want to continue the service that I've provided to this community over the last seven years. I have a proven track record of leadership on the board. Uh, one of the years I was president, this board won one of the top five honor boards in the state of Texas. We know how to lead and we do listen to our community and that is why I have listening to you on my campaign signs. I will stay informed on the issues facing public education. I'll continue to devote significant time to this. I treat it like it's a full-time job. I wanna continue working with our early childhood program and get those goals moving forward. I wanna support workforce development and continue the um, pathway for the Advanced Industries Academy. I wanna make certain that all of our um, efforts help lower the achievement gap and bring our kids up. And I want to increase teachers' time for school district or district instruction. And finally, I will continue to advocate 
on behalf of this community and district in Austin. Ms. Jackson. Here's some information I want to share with you. The average ISD trustee, new trustee, takes three years to get past the learning curve when they move into this position. For me, that's like taking someone from Algebra 1 and throwing them into calculus. I have taken pre-cal, and I'm ready for calculus. And so for me, when I look around how I can serve my community, this is my field. This is where I feel like I can do the most good. But there's another reason why I also want your vote. I've sat in this boardroom, actually in the back where Missy is, multiple times, and there's a picture in this room that always touches my heart, and it's that picture right there of the girl with Down syndrome. And I look at her, and I have a couple of questions. One, was she a student here? Does she still have that smile on her face 10 years later down the road out of our system? And the other question I have is out of the seven members up here, who is representing her? And I want to be the representative for children like her. Mr. Yedavaldi. I'm a lifelong learner. I like learning all sorts of new things. And I want to bring that passion to all the students, all of our students here in Plano ISD. I can't do that by being a teacher because I'm not certified to do so. I can be a mentor, I can be a friend, but I can't do that effectively. But I can take my skill set and bring it to the success of this board. I'm a collaborative person and I'd like to collaborate with all the rest of the board to make sure that Plano ISD moves forward into the 21st century uh, economy by teaching our children both uh, the, the ways forward in a 21st century economy with a moral compass in mind. Also, I remember the quote, the best way of evaluating society is to see how we treat the least of us. I'd like to see, I'd like to advocate more for those who need the most help in our district. Vote for me, thank you. Ms. Powell. Yes, as a proud parent of a PSD student over 10 years of volunteering at different Plano schools, I have been a room parent, I've been a carnival chair, I've been you know, the multicultural coordinator, and I've also worked on an Austin Fair this year at Williams High School for five months. So I understand special needs. So I know what makes our school great. It is teachers and parents working together with the right resources. My MBA also gives me the financial and organization skills that ne that's needed on the school board to ensure resources are used for maximum effectiveness and efficiency. Benjamin Franklin once said, the only thing more expensive than education is ignorance. And Plano needs a strong school district that provides good quality education to our future generations. I have the commitment, the experience, the skills needed to oversee policies that affect our students, our parents, and our Plano taxpayers. Please vote for me, Angela Plow, place two. Thank you. Mr. Liu. So some people ask me why you want to run PSD Board of Trustees since your kids both gone to college or graduated from college already. My answer is for me, it's not a question of why, it's a question of when. Because when my kids were young, I want to be with my kids. There's a Chinese proverb that says, you know, if you want to a public politician, you have to take yourself, take your family. Well, well. For me, maybe I'm selfish. When my kids, when my son needs me at the basketball court, I want to be with him. I don't want to leave my son at home and come to the PID board meeting from 6 to 10.30 the other night. S yes. four and a half hours, and I want to spend that time with my kids. Right? I'm selfish, right? But right now, my youngest son is in college already. I want to spend more time with the kids. I understand the kids. I spend time with the kids all the time. My son has been egoed out for four years, but I, I'm still a Boy Scout leader. I hike with the kids, 20 miles hiking, 50 miles cycling. I, I work with the kids. Thank you. Ms. Picard. Um, there's so much to say in so little time. Um, I, I really want to be a voice for working families. I think that a lot of times we blame parents that you're not involved enough. We leave, you know, we abdicate responsibility to the schools. But a lot of times families aren't aware of all the resources that are available to them that the, the city provides and the county provides and, and local community organizations provide. And so I think the school can be a powerful conduit to getting information to parents and families to help them become more involved.
involved with their children, not just in school, but just in general. So that's something that's important to me. As an attorney, I know how to be an advocate for the interest of somebody other than my own, and I want to be an advocate for our parents, and I want to be an advocate for our children. Uh, and I'll be happy to answer questions afterwards. Carissa Picard, uh, place one. Thank you. Ms. Richards. I want to start by thanking my family and friends for coming on this journey with me the last seven years. You don't serve by yourself. You serve as a team and it helps at Chick-fil-A has great takeout. <laughs> I've spent my entire professional and volunteer life in service of kids and education. I study extensively the, the issues facing education. I use all my resources, all my contacts to make sure that Plano is staying innovative, is pushing forward. And I know the PIC community and our schools very, very well. I use my data skills for being an engineer to know really what matters in our schools and how each one is performing. I'm an excellent listener. I know what our community cares about. I always like it when a parent asks me, do you know? And then we have a good conversation. I'm dedicated to maintaining our high standards even as we face increasing challenges. Moving forward, I'm committed to helping our wonderful teaching staff, expanding choices for all kids, closing the achievement gap in our challenged schools, and managing our tax dollars carefully, keeping the tax dollars in the classroom. I'm dedicated to the success of every student in every school, and I would appreciate your vote. Tammy Richards, place one. If you think it's easy to prepare for this election <laughs> and to sit up here and answer these questions, it's not. So I want you to help me thank these people for giving their opinions and their viewpoints so that you can be informed when you go to the polls. And I encourage you as our audience and voters within the Plato ISD School District to go to the polls and to exercise your right to vote. Early voting will be conducted at multiple locations during various hours beginning April 24th through May 2nd for, for the May 6th, 2017 election. It, additional election information, locations, and hours are available at the Collin County election website. I offer a very special thank you again, once again, to Plano ISD Council of PTAs. Thank you, Ruth, for being here, for being so generous with your time. Thanks also to our PTA members and key communicators who joined us in the audience tonight. Before we leave, I'd like to point out that all, to all of you that the candidate profiles are available online at the key communicators website. And from there, you will be able to access a video of tonight's forum. So make sure that if you have any questions that you missed, if you can go there and please encourage your neighbors and friends to, to view it also. It should be available by 5 p.m. tomorrow evening. Thank you again for, journey, for joining us tonight. We are adjourned.